Your audience will aggressively reject bad audio. It's like something, you know, deep, deep in our psyche of bad audio. It's just everyone wants to just leave the theater. Uh, but bad video with good audio can be forgiven. That's still a good video. Hey, I'm Brian. I'm Robin. And welcome to part one for sound. This is Sound On Set. So unfortunately, sound is one of the most overlooked and least understood portions of a film set for especially younger filmmakers. Uh, but it's one of the things that can make your production really stand out and make your story shine above others. We have a lighter kit um, in-house. We use a Zoom H5 recorder. We always have a dedicated sound person whose sole job it is to focus on the sound. The whole one-man band or even like one person doing two or three tasks, it's amazing how quickly sound gets ignored and then either you might have it be over-modulated or clipping or even what happens often is they forget to hit record on both the camera and on the sound. Like that, it's just, it's really difficult to split your brain to remember to hit record on a bunch of different things and throughout a film race, you'll definitely forget that. Um, and that always sucks to like lose a scene because you didn't get the, the sound sync to it or it'll add just more to your post-production when you're like, oh, okay, the actors say those lines again in post-production with all the extra time that we have there. It's also really helpful because then you have somebody who is concentrating on listening for things, inconsistencies, interruptions. Usually if you have a script supervisor or somebody watching the script, they can often work with whoever your sound person is to make sure that you're getting everything covered if you do a retake and you need to make sure that certain lines got covered. Oftentimes on set, uh, audio is the most bullied, by which I mean uh, people are willing to wait for actors, they're willing to wait for camera. Oh, always willing for camera. A camera needs five minutes. Uh, but audio, if they're like, hey, let's hold, we have a plan, they're like, we can't, we can't. When you're listening, like for a plane to clear or for a car or a truck or something, everybody just has to stop. And that can feel very tedious very quickly. And it can seem like it's taking double the amount of time. Yes, you can make up a lot of sound in post production, but there's something you get that you miss something when you're not using the actual, like, matched take. Um, of the sound, and also you're losing a lot of opportunity for references. Uh, and especially on a film race, you may not have time to create a whole soundscape in post with uh, dubbing the actors' lines and creating ambience and sound effects. On Kylie, uh, Justin Mo, who's our sound guy uh, on that one, he, got a, he brought some gear, and it was the walk and talk scene. The boom pole usually works pretty well, and it was boomed well, but it was a walk and talk. So you can only get so close without risking the boom in the frame. And it was and, windy. And Justin said, hey, Brian, please give me like, you know, five, 10 minutes to mic up these actors. I'm like, well, I rarely use Lav, which is true because it tends to rustle. But Justin Lav them so well that like listening back to that scene in post, I'm like, oh, I'm glad we got that because it's a pretty important scene early on. And it sounded so good with the Lavs. So giving the yeah. sound person or part of your sound team the time to do it correctly saved us, well, I mean, it helped save the movie because like it was, you don't want to start your film with like a really crummy dialogue scene where you can't tell what's happening. We have an over on that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're the boss. Yeah. So typically when we're doing our film races, we'll use a Zoom H5 recorder, which is like a little recorder that runs on batteries or power, um, two channel. It's pretty solid, it's a good job. Um, obviously we have XLR cables to connect the microphones. Uh, we will typically boom most scenes with a boom pole. Um, and we have a pair of matched octavas, so you buy them as a match set, so they both sound the same. So if you're doing two mics, you're not getting different uh, pickup patterns or mic sounds. Um, they sound, they're designed to sound exactly the same. The Octave is a really good microphone. It's a little noisy for um, handheld booming if you have an operator who fidgets a little bit, but it, when it's clean, it sounds really, really good. We do have another shotgun mic we use sometimes, uh, which is a more direct pickup pattern. It can reach further, but the Octave is a bit more forgiving if you have a quiet operator or, in this case, on stands. Whether it's a lavalier or a boom mic, generally the sound you want to capture from an actor comes uh, in the chest area, uh, right here in front of the face, obviously. Lavalier mics will come with different attachments depending on the kit. You'll have like a vampire clip, which is like two little needles. You'll have like a um, like a spring clip. Sometimes it can be bulky. Sometimes it's just gaff tape is the best way to do it. And also, especially lavaliers, a rookie mistake a lot of people make is they mic it too close to like the neck and you get this really awful bassy sound of voice. It's not a crisp, clear mid-tones. You get like this wah, 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 sound and it's pretty awful. Like muffled, almost. Yeah, so like they're eating the microphone. Depending on your costume, like just if it's, if it's a noisy costume, just make sure you're not miking near like jangly armor or fabric's gonna be swishing and swooshing. I mean, that's the, that's the trick with Malavs is hidden, but not being like brushed over by fabric and stuff. There, we have seen films at different um, film festivals and film races where you have 
like news anchor characters. Totally different story. Oh yeah, visible microphone is great. Like in Apocalypse Rock, we had a visible mic. We definitely intentionally kind of over modulated that one so we could we could dial that in in the post production. But we have clean audio for him. The funniest thing is when you watch like an indie film and like the news reporter has a handheld mic and you can't hear them for some reason. Like you can see a microphone. I know it's just a prop, but that oh, like oh, that cracks me up. Go ahead and have your actors record wild lines, as in have them record the dialogue properly, not on camera, you know, into the mic when you're there on location or on set. The sound of a room adds so much character. In one of our other videos, you actually had talked about the importance of like framing and how the framing and especially when you introduce a character, stuff like that, how that can add so much and tell you and convey so much about the character or the story. Sound can do the same thing, and plus, it can actually be a really quick thing and it might save you time in post. Really get that room tone. It probably seems superfluous, like you don't need it, but especially if you have like gaps in your dialogue where you need to fill that sound, room tone is your best friend. Something else you can do and should do for your editor is to make sure that you get a slate. Clap and verbally slate saying, verbally this is slate. take one. Slap. Absolutely, yeah. so that you don't have to go like, okay, he said this in the audio clip. Where do they say it in the, in, especially- Audio treasure hunts. And if there's things in your scene, um, like a crowd or traffic, it's okay that you're hearing that. You wanna make sure that it's controlled and you have kind of like can work with the levels. In fact, it's kind of weird if you see a crowd and don't hear them. Like you'll see sometimes a lot of behind the scenes with nightclub scenes. People are pretending to shout over music that's not there so they can bring that music in. They're not actually just like saying, hey, let's just film with loud music and go for it. You need control over your elements. Actually, that was something that I remember hearing about The Social Network, the very opening scene. They said that they actually filmed the first couple of takes with all of the background extras speaking at volume. The, the, then the, the background extras were quiet so that they had a sense of how it felt for them to actually speak over them. Typically, you want to stay away from period pieces because cars and planes really start to ruin those quickly. Another pretty significant aspect of production sound is also Foley, which kind of bridges the gap between production and post. On Free Climb, uh, Karen and I actually did a, quite a bit of Foley sound. We just went out onto the front sidewalk and created a lot of like rock scraping noises and just did a lot of different Foley something that takes in some ways less time than searching through something like free sound because you know if you know precisely what you want then you can just go do it and make it yourself if you have the resources to do so. so if you're just starting out with film races and this is one of your first ones if you don't have a lot of actors you don't have a lot of crew members to designate to sound don't have a lot of spoken dialogue and then also that comes with maybe not having the biggest cast of characters if you can cut down and, and keep your crew and cast small, that can help a lot because then you're not having to record as much and potentially you can even get away with just doing some pickup lines or voiceover and you don't have to do as much live recording as, as necessary that you would need for a bigger cast. Honestly, one of the hardest things is like, oh, I want to put six characters on a table and have them talk. Boy, oh boy, that gets difficult very quickly. Mm -hmm. Particularly, I mean, for a lot of reasons, but particularly for sound. Because then you have like your closest of actors that are getting good sound versus the wides that aren't, and your sound's all over the place. So I know people want to try and do like a, a Tarantino style of movie when they start out with lots of con lots of rich dialogue around a table. Very difficult. You're better off doing something that seems more complex, but you can hide with like, oh, city sounds, cool. It's because some traffic sounds. Um, add, add some music in the background, and they go into a shop for maybe a conversation or something like that. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Film Race series. Bye for now. Thank you.